What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in today's video, I'm going to go through some of my best tips for navigating the interiors of models inside of SketchUp. This can get a little bit tricky when trying to use the Orbit tool and other tools, so I wanted to kind of talk about some quick ways to move around in your models. I also wanted to let you all know that for the duration of this week through Friday at 11.59 p.m., the SketchUp Essentials course enrollment is open. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to get some more in-depth SketchUp training, make sure you check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. And again, enrollment for that's going to be closing on Friday night. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you go check it out now. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is a model that I've been using for my rendering channel. So I kind of figured we'd go ahead and use it for this video as well. So, and I can't really say this name very well, so just type this in and it'll be the only model that shows up. Um, but it's from Andy Didyich and it's a great really detailed model that uh, we can use to kind of go through some of these principles. So you can download this and follow along or really use any kind of model that you'd like. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk about some tips for actually navigating around inside the interior of a model. And so I got a question earlier this week and I see this a bunch of the time actually um, where it, it gets kind of tricky to navigate around the interior interior of a SketchUp model. So um, especially because if you kind of get inside and you accidentally like put your mouse in the wrong place, you can rotate through walls and things like that. And just interior navigation in general can get a little bit tricky. So I wanted to talk about some of my best tips for interior navigation and how you can use these in order to really move around in your model in a smart kind of way. And so the first tip that I wanted to talk about is creating a working view. So probably the easiest way to navigate around the inside of a model is to not. And what I mean by that is instead of moving your camera into a space like I was before and trying to orbit around and you know the orbit tool doesn't always work super well on interior spaces, what you can do instead is create what's called a working view. And so a working view is great for if you need to get in here and actually like work on these spaces, what you can do is you can set up a view with things turned off so that you can easily access those spaces. So like for example, I would have a working view set up right here and what I would do is I would save that with things like all my landscaping turned off. So I would put my landscaping on a certain layer Layer. I would also have like the roof hidden and things like that and then I would save this scene so in order to create a scene what you do is you get everything set up the way that you want and then just go to view animation add scene and what that'll do is that'll save a scene with your current view properties associated with it we'll talk more about this in a minute but what this does is this allows you to really set this up where you can get in here and use the orbit tool to fly around but also make any changes that you need to so if you needed to move furniture around or adjust walls it's really easy to do when you have this roof turned off and you have access to this space and so one of the things that can get a little bit tricky, especially if your model hasn't been set up a certain way, is let's say um, it, it's really easy for this space for me to kind of hide the roof and save that as a part of my scene. And uh, one other piece of this is you may want to go ahead and label this. Um, so I would label this working view. Um, but what can get a little bit tricky if you haven't set your model up a certain way is if you see down here, I can't really get into this second level. Like I would have to go in and hide all of this different stuff. Um, if you set your model up where your first and second floors are on different layers, you can turn that on and off. But if you're dealing with a model where that hasn't been set up, that gets a little tricky. And so my recommendation in the case like that one is to add a section plane. So you can add a section plane by coming in here and clicking clicking on this or you can go to tools and click on section plane and what you're going to do and I'm going to tap the up arrow key to lock this to the blue axis is you're going to take a section cut through this wall right here and then probably what I would do because the section plane kind of gets in the way you can see how when you click on it you accidentally select it and working underneath it is really kind of tricky um, so probably what you would do is you would go up to your view and you would turn off section planes so you would leave section cuts turned on but section planes would be turned off and then what you would do is you would just add a new view so in this case we would call this something like working view level one and then for this other one 
we could call that working view level two. So I would rename this working view level two. And then you would have different views set up in here where you could quickly get in here and edit these spaces. So instead of having to get down into that space, we would just hide everything above it so you can get in here and you can make changes really easily. So you can see how I could get in here and I could move furniture around. And then um, probably what I would do is have another view where everything's turned back on. But you can see how I can adjust this view so that I can get back to this one really quickly quickly as well. And so that's kind of a workaround for not having to get inside your building at all. Um, so that's probably what I would recommend if you're actually doing work is creating a working view. But let's say that you actually did want to be inside of this space and create different views and things like that. You can see how when I fly in here and I use the orbit tool, I don't really get the fine um, I don't really get the fine adjustment that I want in here. And so my recommendation for working with the interiors is to use the first person camera tools. And you can find those over here in the large tool set. Or if you right click up here, um, I believe, you can also click on the option for camera and you can get a camera toolbar that contains these same tools. But I would recommend using these tools in order to navigate around the interior of a model. So like for example, what the look around view is gonna do is if you click on this little eye and you click and drag, you can see how instead of orbiting the model or orbiting around the model, what happens is this keeps you in kind of a fixed point or a fixed location inside of your model and that allows you to just look around. And so that's really useful for being in this interior space because you can see how instead of moving everything around you with the orbit tool, this allows you to just pick a point and then look at something inside of your model. And so that's gonna be my next tip when working with an interior space like this is save your views once you've found them. So you're gonna find yourself coming back to the same views over and over again. Well, in this case, for example, this is a great view of my living room that kind of shows everything in the living room. Well, once you have this view set up and you have all your visibilities turned on the way that you want them to be, go ahead and add another scene and call this living room. So once you have a view set up that you like, go ahead and save that. That way when you're in your working view or your all on view or something like that, um, if you wanna get back into that interior living room view quickly, you don't have to re-navigate and deal with all these tools. You can just click on living room and you can get right back in there. So once you get a view that you like, go ahead and save that. And so another tip I wanna talk about and let's see if we can get into a different space. So, whoops. So let's say for example that we wanted to get kind of a view inside of one of these bedrooms. Um, so what we could do is we could use the position camera tool in order to set our camera in a certain location. So let's say that we wanted our camera to be kind of in this corner looking at this closet. Well, there's a tool in here called position camera that's gonna allow you to do that. And so what that tool does is that allows you to click on a point and it's gonna set your camera based on that point. So your camera is gonna to go to that location and it's gonna set you to the look around tool so that you can just click and drag once your camera's been set on that point in order to really kind of um, really kind of precisely place your camera. And so one cool thing about that, and we'll go back, we'll go to our working view level two view, is one cool thing about that is you can use that to set what you're looking at when you, when you place your camera in a space. So like for example, what I did before is I just clicked in here and then I single clicked. Well, that doesn't give me a whole lot of control over my camera. Um, and I just went to camera previous to go back to where I was before. However, if I take this tool and I click and hold on a point and I drag my mouse, I can actually set what direction that camera is facing just by letting up on my mouse. So you can see how I was able to dictate that my camera was going to look at this point using that tool. And one thing you might notice about that though is you don't have a very good view in here. And so what we wanna do is we wanna adjust the eye height of our camera. And so this is gonna be the next tip is when you're using the look around tool or when you place your camera like this, you can actually type in a value to set your eye height. So you can see how since this, since 
since I placed my camera on this point, this put me into look around view. And you can see how my eye height is 19 feet right now because I'm on the second level of this building. Well, if I was to type in a value like 25 feet, that's gonna move my camera up by five feet. And so I can use that to find and position my camera just like this. And so what we could do is we could use this and probably what we want to do is we want to, we'll make this simple and go inside of our outliner, is we wanna go ahead and unhide our roof and everything that was kind of set as hidden in here. And so now what I have is I have this nice view where I can look at this closet inside of my model. But one thing you're gonna notice is we were able to set our eye height, but you can't really see a whole lot of this room. Like it's not a very good view. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the zoom tool to adjust our field of view. So our field of view is gonna allow us to see more stuff or change the number of degrees that you can see inside of your camera view. And so the way that that works is you can just click on this and then you can see how as soon as I activate the zoom tool, what I get in the corner is I get a field of view measurement. And so that's telling me what the field of view of the camera is. Well, for a tight space like this, probably what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna adjust this so you can see more. And so you can either do that by holding the shift key down and clicking and dragging like this, or by typing a value in. So I can type in a value of 75 and hit the enter key or 80 and hit the enter key. And one thing you need to be a little bit aware of when you're setting your, a wider field of view though, is if you set this really high, like 120 degrees, this is gonna give you a whole lot of distortion inside of this space. So your image isn't gonna look very good. So you need to be careful what you set this to, but you can use this at a value of like 70 or 80 degrees to really see more with your camera than you could when you had a lower field of view. View. And the nice thing about your uh, field of view settings is you can also save that in a scene. So if I right click in here and I add a scene and we call this bedroom closet. Now if I go back to like my working view and then back to my bedroom closet view, you can see how this saves that field of view measurement in here um, in order to you can see how that saves this field of view measurement in here, which allows you to save this, this entire view of this space. So once you get a space like this figured out and you get a camera view that you like, make sure to save that as a scene as well. So, and then the last thing I wanna talk about is actually moving around inside of your model. Because especially with like a tight space like this one, you can see how that gets really tricky really fast. Um, so sometimes, you just wanna walk around like normal. Well, there's a walk tool in here that's gonna allow you to click and drag. And that's actually going to allow you to walk around in this space. And the nice thing about this is this defaults to collisions, meaning you can't accidentally walk through a wall using this tool. So you can see how I can click and drag and use this to move forward and backward. And this has collision detection in here, meaning that uh, it's really hard to get lost in a space when you're using the walk around tool. So when I'm walking, you can see how I run into this wall and it doesn't let me through. You can disable that by holding the Alt key while you're clicking and dragging. So when you run into something like this, um, if you can't move forward anymore, just hold that Alt key and it'll disable the collision detection. So you can use this to move around this space really precisely without having to worry about navigating through walls or anything like that. So once you kind of master these tools, um, what this does is this allows you to move around your interiors really quickly without having to worry about getting lost or anything like that. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Did you know about these tips? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.